Poetics, bring the drums in. Hi guys, welcome back. This is Sean from Play by Pause. This is definitely one of the on-camera shotgun microphone you should consider when you're looking to improve your audio quality. So in this video, I'm going to talk about things that I really like about this device and probably things that I dislike about it. So getting right into it, this is definitely one of the smallest, lightest microphone that I hold before. Probably is one of the lightest in the markets. It weighs roughly 35 grams, which is extremely light. To give you guys a better idea, it weighs like a Rode Wireless Go microphone, and it's very, very tiny. If I have to compare to the size of microphones, this is roughly five to seven times smaller than the Rode Video Mic Pro and the Video Mic Go. It's roughly two times smaller than the Boya BY MM1. Generally, I love small gears because most of them do not have any on or switch and also no battery to worry. This small microphone commonly use power from the cameras via um, a headphone cable, headphone jack cables, or in this case, they're using a hot shoe, which I'm gonna talk about later. And all these small microphones are incredibly easy to use. You just have to plug and go. However, the audio quality might not be as great. It's certainly better than a built-in camera, but I don't think it's gonna be as good as the bigger microphone. These bigger brothers are gonna give you much better audio quality, but the cons are the battery. When it dies, it dies. You need to replace another extra battery for that, which can be pretty frustrating. This brings us back to the Sony ECM G1 because this device does not have any internal batteries. Instead, it was powered by the camera hot shoe. The advantage of using a hot shoe is obviously wireless, and with the new Sony cameras, you are able to use digital audio interface via a hot shoe, which is going to bring more advantage when it compares to analogs. Another thing with hot shoe or MI shoe is this is going to give you a cleaner, less noisier uh, sound quality when it compares to a 3.5 audio jacks. So right now I'm using a Sony ECM G1, testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four. So right now I'm using the Sony ECM G1 with the headphone jack. So testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four, testing one, two, three, four. Some additional notes, you are required to update your Sony cameras to the latest firmware because I did encounter some problem with my A7III's while I'm using an older versions. The one that I used before is 3.01 and I couldn't detect this device until I updated it to the latest firmware 4.01. So remember to update your firmware before you use this. As far as the design, the ECM G1 is pretty solid. It has an anti-vibration damper and optimizations of the structure suppresses the lower frequency vibration noise. So this is buttonless, which creates a very clean design. But this leads me to a question, where is the attenuator's buttons or switch? This is a switch where you commonly find from most of microphones, a switch that you can control the dB, the minus 10, plus 10 dB. Well, these do not have that switch or buttons. So you must be wondering, probably I can just, you know, adjust the audio level from the camera itself, but you can't. So this is the error you're gonna get. There's no way you can change the level inside the cameras or the microphones. So there's two ways of doing it. The first is to control the distance between your camera and also your subject, like what I'm doing right now. Secondly, use the analog way, which is by plugging in the 3.5 mm audio jacks on the side of the device and then into the camera. So now you can control the audio level from the camera like what you used to do. In a way, it solved the problems, but it kind of defeated the purpose of having cableless. So to me, this is definitely one of the biggest downsides of these uh, microphones. Enough of all this, I'm just gonna share you some of the comparison and samples of this microphone. For the first test, I'm just gonna compare the difference between the ECM G1 and also the built-in camera audio. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna read some of the specs about the ECM G1 while I'm walking. So let's do it right now. Um, so the ECM G1 focuses on ambient sound suppressions and clear frontal sound collections, which means it gives you a clear sound collection from in front of the camera and let you capture the audio you want such as when selfie shootings with its super cardio characteristics, these shotgun microphones can suppress ambient sounds and emphasize 
the sound from in front of the camera. This idea when the target sound collection's range is in the frontal directions, such as when shooting selfies or other sound source in front of camera. It is also highly effective in suppressing ambient sounds even when shooting indoors, reducing pickup of echoes from walls and voice reverberations, and enables a clearer sound collection of conversations. It is ideal for indoor review movie shootings. Following, I'm going to compare the ECM-G1 with a pretty affordable condenser microphone from Boya. It's a BY-MM1 model. So this model costs around 30 USD, which is pretty affordable when it compares to the ECM-G1. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to read the scripts while walking around. So unlike the conventional analog microphone, the ECM-G1 uses MI shoe supports, enabling battery and cable-free shootings. With no need for batteries or cables, setup for sound collections consists of simply attaching the microphones to the camera and my shoes. Power is supplied directly from the cameras to the microphone, so you can and continue shootings without worrying about the microphones, battery running out. And because of camera connections via and my shoes, it's going to be cable free. Cables cannot get away even when shooting with a very angled LCD monitor open horizontally. Lastly, I'm going to compare with the Big Boy Rode Video Mic Pro and the ECM G1s. So, I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, something to keep in mind. These two microphones are directional microphones. So, we're going to start. The ECM G1 was designed in a very compact size. The compactness provides greater flexibility and mobility when shooting plus easy setups when shooting with gimbals or grips. The front of the microphone will not intrude on the shoots even when you're shooting in a wide angle lens. And the shortness of the bags prevents the microphones from contacting your foreheads when you look through the viewfinder. So all of these microphones are super directionless. With these settings, all this microphone is going to pick up a lot of audio in front of the camera and ignore the rest. Something to keep in mind, all these tests that I conducted earlier is to give you and me an idea on how each of these microphones works and performs. Frankly speaking, I'm not an audio expert, so I couldn't give you guys a very detailed, in-depth uh, audio comments. But based on the results, I must say, the Rode Video Mic Pro sounds the best and most natural of all. Um, as well, the Boya, the most affordable Boya BY-MM1, is not bad either. It has a lesser clarity and pick up a little bit more ambient noise compared to the ECM G1, but it's pretty understandable when it comes to a pretty low price tag. As for the new ECM G1, it works pretty well. I would say better than what I thought. Um, it's certainly not as good as the Rode Video Mic Pro, but it's not bad either when you consider the size and ease of use. So to sum things up, um, I'm just gonna you know go back to the very beginning of this video. The ECM G1 is very small, it's compact, it's lightweight, it's cableless. Uh, so you do not have to worry much about breaking uh, breaking the cable or also breaking the ports from cameras. And also lastly, you do not have to worry about battery since everything is directly from the camera. Some additional notes. Since it's so small, you can easily attach it to your camera while using a gimbal. It works pretty flawlessly until you invert your gimbal. Based on my experience, it's much better when you compare to other microphones out there due to the form factor, but still, it will block your gimbal motor at certain angle. Ultimately, everyone's setup is different. Everyone has different scenario, different assignments. And probably this device will work perfectly for you, or probably it doesn't work at all. The decision is pretty much up to you, and I hope you know more about these products, and you know, probably you can consider this for the next purchase. Also, I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys do enjoy, feel free to like, share, and probably consider subscribe us. And as always, create and have fun. I will see you guys in the next video.